Okay guys, today we are in the greenhouse. Let me show you what we're doing. So we had to make a bunch of room for our trees. So we've got our lemon tree here. There's our dragon fruit under there. It's still doing pretty good. Looks nice. And our two fig trees. We've got all of our loofahs up here, our sage and our lavender. But today we are saving seeds. So we've got some loofahs that have dried up like this one. We've got some corn seeds. These are morning glories. These are Black Eyed Susan Vines. These are Zinnias. We're gonna save some of our sun-dried pepper seeds. We've got sunflower seeds down here and marigolds. And then all the way down here, we have calendula. And I think that's it down here. So let's get into it. Marigolds. And I'm actually gonna go out there and show you guys some of my marigold plants with the flowers alive and then some of them dead and dying back when we collect seeds. So these are all my marigolds and they're starting to fall over and some of them are dying. And you can see right here, right here is a better example. So those little black things are seeds and you just take them and pull them out just like that. And you save all of those and each one of them is a new flower next year. They contain a ton of seeds. And because I've already saved some, I'm not going to be saving these ones. That's why I'm just throwing them on the ground. Marigolds can even reseed themselves. So if I leave these here to die out next year, in this walkway, there will be tons of seeds. Probably not in this bed because we're going to plant stuff here. But in the walkways, you'll definitely see new marigolds. And while we're out here, our zinnias are next to our marigolds. And how we save zinnia seeds is just like sunflowers. We let the flowers grow big and beautiful for the bugs and for the bees. And then they start to die back. And as soon as they've died back, you want to save the ones that you know were pretty. You might not want to save a seed from a tiny little zinnia like that, but a big round fluffy zinnia like this would be perfect to save seeds from. So here's another example of a big, beautiful one that was big and fluffy. And in here, all these are zinnia seeds. And I'll show you in the greenhouse with the ones that we've already dried out. But look at all those seeds. That's a seed right there, that little arrowhead looking thing. Okay, out here on the trellis, we have our beautiful black eyed Susan vines and our morning glory in the middle. And as you can see, they're starting to die out and brown off. First, I'm gonna show you the black eyed Susan seed pods. So you'll see that they grow flowers like this from these little pods. But some of these little pods contain seed pods and in each one of these seed pods there's about four seeds let me see if i can find a dry one usually when black eyed susan vines are drying out and their seed pods are drying out the seed pods pop open and self seed themselves that's why vines can be so invasive here's another one but it's not dry perfect here's a dry one this one has a hole in it. Let's see if there's any seeds in it. Nope, so there are no seeds in this one. Let's see if we can find another dried one. No seeds in that one either, but you can see where the seeds would be. Here is one that looks like it hasn't broken open. Let's see if I can do this one handed. There are your seeds. And like I said, there's about four in each one. They're tiny. So there's two from that side. And then only one from the other side. Now for the morning glory here in the middle. A morning glory grows these big round seed pods. So you can wait for them to dry on the plant or like we did, you can pop them off now and you can dry them in the greenhouse. So let's get back in there. Lufas you would normally want to grow on the vine, but because we had a frost coming, we pulled them all off. So I have ones of all variations of drying stages. This one is getting close to being done. This one is just starting out. As you can see, it's yellow. 
This one's more brown. And then I have one right here that's gonna take a very long time to dry out, and this is green. And when you're drying loofahs inside, you wanna make sure that you're rotating them or that they have a really good airflow because they will mold and you won't be able to use them. So here's one that's been fully peeled and fully deseeded. Here's one. And you can hear the seeds wiggling around inside when they get dry and you shake them. So we're gonna peel this one and save the seeds from this one. And then I've got a couple more in here, but these ones aren't done drying just yet. So I've just popped the bottom right off this loofah and already I have a seed that came out. It's that simple. So I'm gonna save the seeds and I'm gonna finish peeling this and knocking the rest of the seeds loose. When it's dry, it should be very easy to peel. If it is not easy to peel, it is not done drying. I just tapped it a couple times and I've already got another seed. They should all just fall out by you gently tapping them and shaking it. Oh, I can hear them. Oh, there's another one. And again, one loofah is gonna give you dozens of seeds. We are gonna compost these shells and that's how we do it. Okay, now our sunflowers. Kind of just slide your finger on them and squeeze and all the seeds pop right out. We save a lot of sunflowers our first year we bought a pack of 10 sunflower seeds and since then we have started growing hundreds of sunflowers. They're good food for the animals. They make beautiful decorations. And we even eat some of our sunflower seeds. Okay, so as you can see, I've only done around the very edge and pulled the seeds out of the very edge. There's still a ton more seeds there, but I have all these seeds in my lap. And then I have a huge handful of seeds here. One flower creates so many more for next year. And this was the big benefit to me about investing my time into seed saving. Okay, I think I showed you guys pretty well how the sunflowers and the loofahs do. And I showed you guys the Black Eyed Susan vine outside. They have a not dried seed pod, which looks like this. And then a dried seed pod that looks like this. 
and inside that seed pod are four of these tiny little round seeds. So I already showed you guys that outside and I think it shows you guys pretty well how to do it. When you get the pod, you just pop it open and inside each of the pods, there's about four seeds. And that's all there is to it. Up next, I'm gonna show you guys the morning glory. So, morning glories grow these little round seed pods. They start out green, but as they dry, they look like this. And you can just take the seed pod and kind of smush it and pull it. And inside each little round pod, there is about six to eight seeds. And they look like little orange slices. But this is just one seed pod and it grew all of these plants for next year. Although be careful with vines, along with the Black Eyed Susan vines, especially if you're in a warm area, morning glories, Black Eyed Susan vines, any vines really can become invasive. Up next, I'm gonna show you the zinnias. Like I showed you outside, you just kind of pull them off. and you will get these little arrowhead looking shapes. Those are your seeds. And these are what are your seeds for your next year's zinnias. And each plant has tons and tons of seeds in it. I find seed saving super easy. My first year I found it really difficult. I thought it took a lot of time, but once you know what you're doing, it kind of goes pretty quick. So another one I find pretty easy is corn. So we leave about six out on the stock to dry out a little bit. And as soon as they've started to dry out, we bring them in here, put them on the drying rack. And let me show you. We don't save any that are discolored or brown. As you can see, there are discolored and brown ones in between all these beautiful yellow ones. And these yellow ones are what are gonna be our corn seeds for next year. Again, one ear of corn gives you several seeds. This is probably 50 to 70 seeds for next year's corn grow. Just like with sunflowers, you just use your thumb, run it along, and the seeds kind of fall out. Just like that. Last but not least is our calendula, and these are a great, beautiful flower to grow, but they also have other properties. So I definitely recommend looking into the benefits of calendula. It's not just a beautiful plant to grow. Again, tons of seeds off just one plant, and I will show you guys what the seeds look like. Calendula seeds are really cool. They are kind of round and circle like you can see right there kind of looks like a little worm so all these little curlies are seeds for next year obviously not this because this is the stem of the flower but all the curly parts that look like that are seeds for next year. Okay, now for marigolds. And I showed you guys outside, you kind of just grab and the flower pieces will pull right off. And then if you pinch again, you get all of those seeds. So all these seeds came out of this one single pod and these are each an individual plant for next year. I cannot stress this enough, seed saving is such a money saver. It is a wonderful way to rely on yourself. I highly recommend you guys look into seed saving. It is a wonderful self-sufficiency tool. Okay, so it was a lot cooler in here earlier when I started this morning. I'm sweating now, so I'll see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.